The Garden of Eden is recognized in the three Abrahamic religions of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. But some other religions and cultures have creation stories containing a similar concept to the biblical Garden of Eden that date back much further in history than the Old Testament. And while most scholars readily acknowledge the more ancient sources for the book of Genesis, the vast majority of Jews and Christians seem either unaware of the roots of their own religions and or have little interest, if any, in learning that truth. In the Old Testament book of Genesis, the Garden of Eden is an earthly paradise inhabited by the first created man and woman, Adam and Eve, prior to their expulsion for disobeying the commandments of God. It is also called in Genesis the Garden of Yahweh and in the book of Ezekiel the Garden of God. The name derives from the Akkadian Edenu, meaning plain or step and it is closely related to an Aramaic root word meaning fruitful and well-watered. Another interpretation associates the name with a Hebrew word for pleasure. The location of Eden is described in the book of Genesis chapter 2 verses 10 through 14. A river flows out of Eden to water the garden and from there divides into four rivers. The first is named Pishon, it flows through Havilah where there is gold. The gold of this land is good. The land is also known for a sweet-scented resin and the onyx stone. The second river is named Gihon. It flows through the land of Cush. The third river is named Hittichel and flows east of Assyria. The fourth river is the Euphrates. There have been various suggestions for its modern-day location. Some researchers argue that the location is in Turkey, because the present headwaters of the Euphrates River originate in Turkey, as do the headwaters of the Tigris. Others have proposed that the other end of the Euphrates River, where it meets the Tigris, may be the true location. This requires interpreting the Tigris River as the Hittichel, then interpreting a tributary confluence of rivers as a river head, and then locating two more rivers, the Karun River and the Fossil River Wadi Bataan as the other missing two. Additionally, Lebanon, Israel, and Ethiopia have all been proposed as potential locations. In short, there are many theories and arguments for the location of Eden, but there is no consensus among academia nor theologians. Scholars often compare Genesis 1 with the ancient Babylonian creation account, the Enuma Elish. According to the Enuma Elish, Apsu, the begetter, and the goddess Tiamat were the first two primeval entities. Both are associated with water, Apsu representing waters lying under the earth, and Tiamat representing the seas lying above. These two gods bore pairs of lesser gods representing the heavens, earth, and other natural phenomena. At first, all gods lived within Tiamat's body, but eventually her grandson Marduk rebelled, killed Tiamat, and formed the earth from her corpse. There are numerous similarities between the Enuma Elish and Genesis, leading many scholars to interpret Genesis as based on or influenced by the Enuma Elish. The similarities include a chaotic primeval state. In Genesis, it was formless and empty. In the Enuma Elish, there was chaos from the absence of gods and the absence of name. Both mention primordial waters. In Genesis, there was darkness over the surface of watery depths and separation of two spheres of water. In the Enuma Elish, we have Tiamat, which was the personification of a primeval ocean, split in two spheres of water. Both have the creation of mankind. In Genesis, man is formed out of dust, and in the Enuma Elish, mankind is created from the blood of Kingu, Tiamat's co-conspirator. The number seven is important in both. The Genesis creation takes place over seven days, and the Enuma Elish is recorded on seven clay tablets, each detailing an account of creation. Both describe a day of rest. In Genesis, Yahweh takes up divine rest in his cosmic temple, after creation out of chaos, and in the Enuma Elish, Marduk and other gods take rest in the temple after victory over the creation conflict. It is also noteworthy that in both texts, 
The creation order is roughly similar. Light, dry land, celestial bodies, and then mankind. It is likely the first Genesis account was written as a way to differentiate Jewish monotheistic beliefs from the beliefs held by their polytheistic neighbors. While it can be proven that Genesis is a direct response to the Enuma Elish, it seems as though its author was aware of the Enuma Elish's concepts and wanted to rebut its core polytheistic ideas. In the epic, the gods create Enkidu who runs wild with the animals in the open country as a companion for Gilgamesh. There are particularly interesting similarities between the Garden of Eden story in Genesis and the story of Enkidu's movement from nature to culture and civilization. In both stories, a woman is responsible for the transition of a man who had once eaten and drunk with the animals to a state of estrangement from nature. Once Enkidu is rejected by the animal world, the woman, Shemhat, gives him clothing and teaches him to drink beer and eat bread. All technological developments that separate humans from animals. In Genesis, once Adam has eaten the fruit of the tree of knowledge, he covers his nudity and is sentenced to a life of cultivating food by harsh labor. This is the cost of divine knowledge. In Gilgamesh, when Enkidu becomes estranged from the animals, Shamhat tells him that he has become like a god. Later, on his deathbed, Enkidu laments his removal from a state of nature, only to be reminded by the god Shamash that while civilized life is more fraught with difficulty and the knowledge of one's own mortality, it is a worthwhile price for cultural knowledge and awareness. The Mesopotamian Atrahasis epic opens with the gods digging the irrigation canals of the steppe and plain, including the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, before passing the work on to humans whom they created for this purpose. The Akkadian epic explains, When the gods as men bore the work and suffered the toil, the toil of the gods was great. The work was heavy, the distress was much. Conditions were so severe that, after forty periods of hardship, the gods rebelled against their leader Enlil. A council of the gods was then called, at which the god Enki provided the solution. While the birth goddess is present, let her create a primitive worker. Let him bear the yoke. Let him carry the toil of the gods. Likewise, in Genesis, the garden is planted in Eden by the Lord, who placed the first man in it to work and to keep it. Ezekiel calls Eden the garden of God, and its subterranean water source in Genesis reflects other ancient Near Eastern descriptions of the divine abode. The Sumerians believed that Enki was the god who filled riverbeds with water. They also understood he dwelt under the earth in a freshwater ocean called the Abzu, and he sent up subterranean waters to fill rivers via springs or fountains. He is shown on cylinder seals with two streams of water gushing from his shoulders, perhaps showing he is the source of the waters for the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. Water sources were frequently shown as an irrigation pot with streams gushing forth. Some gods and goddesses have as many as four streams of waters gushing from pots held against their belly. The throne Inki sits on in his underwater Abzu house, in the freshwater ocean under the earth, has several pots with streams of water gushing from them. He is shown distributing these pots to Sumer's kings so that they might have fresh water for the gods' gardens near their cities. So, Eridu, as Enki's primary residence, becomes the one source of the water for all the world's rivers. In the beginning, there was only sea. Then a freshwater stream erupted from the seabed. Land gathered about this freshwater source, and Eridu, the first city, was built by Enki. The primitive first earth was gathered over the Abzu freshwater dwelling of Enki. That is to say, ancient Sumer is likely where one of the prototypes for the Garden of Eden is to be located. So, in Mesopotamian accounts, the Anunnaki and Igigi lived on the earth, in cities which they had built for themselves, 
and they ate food from irrigated gardens adjacent to the cities. Genesis has inverted this by having a garden in Eden unassociated with a city. Adam and Eve are punished by being expelled from the Garden of God to eventually live in cities built by Cain and his descendants, whereas the Sumerian god's intent was to have man dwell for all time in the Garden of the Gods, making irrigation ditches for it and tending the trees and crops. Genesis has inverted the intent of the gods vis-a-vis -vis man by excluding him from the god's garden rather than living in it as an agricultural laborer forevermore. While we are on the topic of Inky in the Garden of Eden, we cannot miss this opportunity to discuss the symbol of the serpent. The Sumerian text, all much more ancient than the biblical Genesis by millennia, recount that Inky loved his human sons and daughters, objected to the tyranny of his benevolent father Anu, placed man in his sanctuary of Eridu in the land of Eden, and as the Yusham Gaul, he bestowed upon him the science of the gods and revealed to him the design of heaven, all against the will of his brother Enlil. So, was Inki a reptilian, as so many uninformed people have argued all over social media and the internet at large? The unequivocal answer is no. The people suggesting otherwise have a very poor understanding of ancient iconography. The serpent has always represented spiritual wisdom, life, and healing. The first symbols of serpents were attributed to Inki and then Ninhurzag. However, it can be argued that the story of the serpent becoming an evil symbol began with the wars between Inki and his brother Enlil. These conflicts began at birth and had to do with birthright to the royal throne of the Nibiruan civilization in which their father Anu was the leader and father to Inki and Enlil. Enlil's anger with Inki caused him to twist the truth around to make the serpent evil, which later became what we know as the story in the Bible. What many think of as being Satan is not that at all, but actually the opposite. Although there was love between Inki and Enlil, they often did not see eye to eye on many issues, especially when it came to supporting human beings. In the Garden of Eden situation, Enlil was furious that Inki permitted humans to have access to knowledge and the mixing of the Anunnaki human genes, thereby becoming more godly and equal to the Anunnaki. To strike back at Inki, and in the attempt to regain his power over humans, Enlil vowed to tarnish Inki's reputation by spreading the idea that the Serpent of Wisdom was evil. Evidently, this tactic reached a high degree of success because today, billions of Christians worldwide view the serpent as their adversary named Satan. He is accused of being the father of evil and displayed as the feared enemy of mankind. But truth is that in Eden, Inky revealed to us not only the science of civilization, that which enabled our freedom and our autonomy on earth, but also the deepest mysteries of heaven, the most advanced esoteric knowledge, the fire of the kundalini, and the secret of our own deification. Inki taught us how to become like the very Elohim spoken of in Genesis. So, you might ask, why did Inki have Adam eat from the tree of knowledge and not from the tree of life? Well, Inky knew had Adam eaten from the other tree, it would not ensure wisdom or spiritual evolution. Instead, it would more likely result in primitive humans living for eons without evolution. Ironically, when it comes to many of our fellow human beings today, it seems that is in fact what has happened. Many of our avid viewers know that there is so much more to the Genesis derivative analysis. This presentation barely scratches the surface. Here is a list of references that will help you dive as deeply into this topic as you wish. We will place them in the description as well.
We hope you enjoyed this presentation on the Garden of Eden. If you liked this presentation, we encourage you to give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notification setting to receive future episodes.